Hi, my name is Edward Barnes and I'm an assistant professor in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It is my pleasure to present this video insight regarding our study, High Dietary Intake of Specific Fatty Acids Increases Risk of Flares in Patients with Ulcerative Colitis in Remission During Treatment with Aminosalicylates, which will be published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. The majority of the work for the study was performed when I was a gastroenterology fellow at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, working with Dr. Joshua Korsnick and my other co-authors on the study. There's been an immense amount of interest in the role that diet plays in the disease course of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. However, at this, despite the fact that this interest occurs at both the patient and the provider level, as providers it's often difficult to make solid recommendations regarding particular diets that a patient might want to um, look into as far as uh, affecting their disease course because the evidence is somewhat lacking <coughs> to this point in time. There have been both retrospective and prospective studies that have been performed, but both types of studies have had some inherent biases that have limited the overall usability of the, of the results, <coughs> or at least have caused some of those results into question. And because of this interest, we decided to perform a prospective study to evaluate dietary patterns among a homogenous population using the same medications for the treatment of ulcerative colitis with what, with what we felt was the same risk of flare during the study period. Our primary aim was to compare patterns of mi macronutrient and micronutrient intake among those patients who experienced a flare of ulcerative colitis with the dietary patterns of those patients who remained in clinical remission throughout the study period. This was a prospective study with participants enrolled from a consortium of 25 academics and community sites throughout the United States. 412 patients were enrolled between August of 2007 and March of 2014. Patients were required to be in remission for the three months leading up to study enrollment, and they were required to be in remission on stable monotherapy with an amino salicylate. However, patients were required to have had at least one flare in the 18 months prior to study enrollment. Patients completed a validated food frequency questionnaire at the time of study enrollment where we analyzed dietary intake of micronutrients, macronutrients, and food groups. Because of the extensive nature of the food frequency questionnaire, we did have concerns about multiple comparisons, and thus we limited our analysis only to those food groups or nutrient groups that have been suggested to increase one's risk of flare in prior studies. Additionally, we used the Benjamini Hotchberg method to adjust for multiple comparisons where we set a false discovery rate of 5%. 11% of the study population experienced a flare within the 12 months following enrollment. We identified a dose response effect across multiple fatty acids, however these results were not significant after we adjusted for multiple comparisons using the Benjamini Hotchberg method. In our multivariable analysis, one fatty acid, myristic acid, did continue to demonstrate this dose response effect, whereby the highest intake of myristic acid, the highest tertile intake, demonstrated the increased risk of flare with an odds ratio of greater than 3. Myristic acid is commonly found in coconut oil, palm oil, and some dairy products, and to this point has not previously been associated with an increased risk of flare among patients with inflammatory bowel disease or with inflammatory bowel disease risk at all. There has been an association with myristic acid and inflammation in other disease states such as obesity and an association with, between myristic acid and interleukin-6, but this association between myristic acid and ulcerative colitis is a novel finding. We believe that these findings can help design interventional studies to help determine if supplementation or avoidance of certain compounds identified here might reduce the risk of flare of patients with ulcerative colitis and remission. Thank you very much for your interest in our work.